Skeeter B is an amazingly refreshing summer beverage. If you live in a warmer climate and summer's coming, you want Skeeter P. Skeeter P is a sweet lemon wine. You're essentially making lemonade and fermenting that into a hard lemonade. Now I'll make my Skeeter P a little bit different than the online recipe. I'll leave a link in the description to that online recipe. And you can follow that to the T, or you can do it my slightly varied way. The original recipe calls for a boil. You boil the water and sugar, and then you add the lemon juice, make it to five and a half gallons, whatever, whatever. I'm, I don't do that boil step. I have drill. And I'm pretty confident that my drill can mix that sugar and water just fine. So I'm skipping the boil. I'm also doing a slightly different nutrition schedule than what the original recipe calls for. The original recipe also calls for a yeast slurry from a previous batch to ferment. You know when you get done fermenting something and you rack it off at the very bottom you got that thick layer of sludge, the yeast cake? You're supposed to use that to ferment Skeeter P. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make a starter of EC1118 and pitch that. The only reason I'm not using a slurry and I'm making a starter is because I don't have a slurry right now. There's no difference between using a slurry or a yeast starter. But why even use a slurry or a yeast starter? This lemon juice, not only is it very acidic, it also contains preservatives. And a low pH and preservatives will inhibit yeast. And the Skeeter P must, or the lemon juice mixture, will be difficult for the yeast to ferment. So you want that yeast to have as much of a boost as possible. When you pitch this itty bitty pack into a into a, a container of something, before it begins fermentation, it has to build a large, happy, healthy colony of yeast. This little itty bitty packet of yeast turns into that giant yeast cake at the bottom of your fermenter. But because of the really low pH from the lemon juice and the preservatives, we're going to make that colony beforehand and pitch the entire colony into the must so it can start fermenting immediately. Give it that boost to overcome the low pH and the preservatives. Now the preservatives are a problem. So what you do, you add two of these bottles to the bucket with all your sugar topped off to five and a half gallons of water, and then you stir it up and let it sit for 24 to 48 hours. A lot of those preservatives will off gas, they'll dissipate, they'll fade away and then you'll be able to pitch your yeast. I'm going to play it safe and leave it alone for the full 48 hours before I pitch my yeast. Everything is already sanitized. Never skip sanitation. The first step of home brewing is sanitation. Now the recipe calls for three 32 ounce bottles of lemon juice, but you don't want to add all that before you ferment. That's just going to be too much pH, too much preservatives. So we're going to add two of these with all the sugar and water, and we're going to ferment that. The original recipe calls to add this after a couple days when the specific gravity gets to a certain point. But I'm going to wait until the fermentation is 100% complete. Then I'm going to add this with all the sweetening sugar. 64 ounces of lemon juice. Feel free to splash and make a mess all you want. And we're going to add 16 cups or 7 pounds of sugar. Then we're going to top it off to 5.5 gallons. And there you go. Now we're going to top this up to five and a half gallons of water. Okay, I got about three gallons there. I'm going to go ahead and put all my nutrients. The original recipe calls for yeast nutrient and yeast energizer, putting half a pitch and the other half after a couple days. I'm going to do my more normal nutrient schedule. I'm going to add Fermato and Fermate K. If I can find my measuring thing. I'm going to add two tisps of Fermate O and one tisp of Fermate K at pitch. 
Then I'm going to add two more tisps of firm 8 at 48 hours and two more tisps at 96 hours. A little bit different than the uh, called for nutrient schedule. The recipe also calls for three quarter tisps of wine tannin. I'm not really sure why it wants you to add wine tannin. I mean, the, the lemon juice is plenty acidic, but uh, it can't hurt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a, I'm gonna go ahead and add a dash of wine tannin. Three quarter tisps, if uh, if you're counting. Yeah, that's about three quarter tisps, I think. And we're going to begin our mixing. The more splashing you make here, the more mess you make, the more of those preservatives you're going to get out of solution. So feel free to go crazy. Yes, homebrew can sometimes be messy. Apologies to the wife. Now we're gonna to top back up to five and a half gallons of water. Then we're gonna make even more mess. Smells like lemonade. Sure, it tastes like lemonade too. There we go. Five and a half gallons. The final mixing. Now, once again, the bigger mess you make here, the better your ski diffuser is going to turn out. I'm going to be doing that some more. But I'm gonna let it sit for now. So you want to let it sit for 24 to 48 hours and you don't want to seal it. You want to put something over top to keep bugs and dirt out but you want to have some sort of vent, lots of vent, lots of airflow so all those preservativizers and all the all the all that crap can degas away you know. So I'm gonna just kind of set my lid on the top I'm gonna seal that hole with a with a bung. I'm gonna put this little cap over the top of the bung. I'm gonna let that so I'm gonna mix it up some more actually. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna let that sit for 48 hours. Then I'm gonna pitch a starter of EC1119 that I'll fix to the make. So the starter. Now I'm gonna make my starter of EC1118. Uh, I'm going to use my handy dandy stir plate and my spinning thingy. With a starter you want to constantly aerate it all day every day for the two days. You want to keep on air just oxygen. The stir plate does that for you. If you don't have a stir plate, just make a make your starter like a jug or a little carboy or something and set it in a high traffic area in your house. And every time you walk past it, just grab it and give it a shake or a stir or whatever. Have your kids help you out. Whatever you see, just grab it, shake it, get air ready, get oxygen in there, you know what I mean? Okay, so we're going to add water. We're gonna do a 2,000, a 2,000 milliliter starter here. <clears throat> That's not 2,000 milliliters, but uh, we're gonna put some water before I pour all this. You wanna put about a half a cup of sugar, one teaspoon, or tisp, a tisp. Is that a teaspoon or a tablespoon? Teaspoon, one tisp teaspoon of gopher and the uh, and the yeast. So a half a cup of this, one tisp of gopher. Whenever you're doing nutrients, gopher, firm O, firm K, whatever, if you put too much, way too much, that can cause off flavors and you'll actually start tasting that nutrient. But uh, on a smaller scale, a little extra won't hurt. It's always better to put too much than not enough. Like within a reason, of course. Okay, and I'm going to call that one tisp. And let's mix all that up together. I wish I could fit that drill bit in here. Home brewing can be very messy. Don't be afraid to make a mess. If you're married like me, you can just have your wife clean it up for you. Hey, sweetie, did you want a sandwich? What the? What the heck? Are you? Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Hey! Ah, ah. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty well mixed. I'll let that sit for a second just to settle and then I'll uh, uh, mix it up again just to be sure it's mixed. 
Man, there's lemonade dripping everywhere. I can't believe you did this. Again, <laughs> you do this all the time. Yeah. Oh, I would say that's pretty well mixed. Let's go ahead and top this up to 2,000 milliliters and pitch our yeast and get our thing going. Okay, let's pitch our yeast in there, shall we? EC1118, the superhero of yeasts. Now we're gonna put this, put our little stir bar in there. Where's it at? It's in here somewhere. So yeah. We're gonna put a little stir bar in there. And we're gonna put that on our stir plate and let it oxygenate itself constantly and perpetually for two days, 48 hours. Once again, if you don't have a stir plate, just make this in a, in a one gallon carboy, fill it maybe a third of the way and put it in a high traffic spot in your house. Every time you walk past it, just grab it and give it a little shake, you know? Right. Stir or whatever. You do not want to put an airlock on this. Do not put an airlock. You want air, oxygen, to be able to go inside there constantly. So just cover it with a paper towel just to keep bugs and dirt out. Let's go ahead and give this another, another bit of a stir. Just to make sure all that sugar is mixed up, you know? I meant to let off of the button, but I pushed it instead. Okay, I want to call that mixed. Okay, so you want to shoot for a starting gravity of 1.070. If you add all that lemon juice and sugar, it's going to give you about 1.070. But you can check your gravity and add more sugar if you need. Or not, actually. It's not really all that important. And I got about... It's really foamy, I can't really tell. But, uh, Oh shoot, that's almost exactly 1.070. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Okay, so Skeeter P is ready, Starter is ready. This has a starting gravity of 1.070. If it was a little bit less than that, I'd add more sugar to pick that up. If it was more than that, I'd just let it go and be happy with it. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a, a little bit of a stir first. Everything's been pre-sanitized. Now we're going to pitch our starter of EC1118. Being careful to leave that little that little uh, stir bar on the bottom of it. And there we go. Reseal, install airlock, and set this in a dark place to ferment. In two days, I'm going to add uh, two teaspoons of Fermato. I'm going to add two teaspoons again at, on four days. Nutrient edition time. It's 48 hours since I pitched the yeast, so I'm going to add two teaspoons of Fermato. I'm going to add another teaspoon of Fermato at 96 hours, day two and day four. Be gas. Try to get some of that CO2 out of fermentation, or out of suspension rather. And try to stir up all that yeast that's on the bottom. So give it a give it a good stir. And pitch your nutrient. Now this is gonna go back in the closet and I'm gonna do the exact same thing in 48 hours. Skeeter P fermentation is finished. I'm shooting this part of the video vertically because it does a much better job of showing the carboy, the bucket, the up and down, the whole, the whole shebang. I got, me, uh, got my stabilizers here. This is two and a half tisps of uh, sorbate and five caffeine tablets crushed mixed together. Just some, some, just some tap water, you know? So, yeah, let's rack this get it going. So I'm gonna stabilize this. Uh, Whack this, pour that in there, like get a little mix, whatever, you know. And wait about 24 hours, maybe 48 hours. And then I'm gonna back sweeten it, add the rest of the lemon juice, let that sit, and then we'll be in business. Okay, it's 24 hours later and our Skeeter B is stable. Why is my floor wet? Oh God, what already? I haven't even started yet. Anyway, it's been 24 hours, so now we're going to add the rest of our lemon juice. 
I actually took some out of this to make lemonade with, but uh, that'll be fine. And six cups of table sugar. That is not table sugar. We uh, actually didn't have some sugar, so my wife had to go buy some, which is okay because she likes going to the store. So, oh, cool. Oh, she brought me some candy too. That's so sweet. I'll have to give her a hug later. Okay, so Peter B is done. It's stable. Now we're going to add our lemon juice, the rest of our lemon juice. We're going to add six cups of sugar and then we're going to let it sit. And let's do this. Let's go ahead and add our lemon juice first. There's stuff dripping everywhere. And there we go, six pounds of sugar, or six pounds, six cups of sugar, rather. And there we go, our six cups of sugar. Now, I have a feeling that I'm about to make a mess, so I'm gonna put the sugar away somewhere, yeah, just away somewhere, so that I don't mess it up. Okay, so let's mix this up. I'll have to refill that. And there we go. This Skeeter P is ready. Now you don't want to bottle it just yet because there is a chance those stabilizers didn't work. So you want to give it a couple of weeks, maybe a month, just to make sure that fermentation doesn't start over again. And uh yeah, as soon as you're confident that it is in fact stable and it won't reform it, you can bottle it. I'm gonna keg it, make it fizzy. Now this isn't very clear right now. Uh, the recipe says it will clear by itself, no problem, in about a month. So I'm probably gonna give it a. Uh, I'll probably give it two weeks and see what happens. If it's not clear by then, I'll add some sparkling or some other sort of pairing agent, make it all nice and pretty, because uh, I want this to look good. This is gonna be my summer brew. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.